G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru and you've reached part five of my Python quick tip series. And today we're gonna to be looking at defining functions. So we're actually getting beyond data types and the basics. And now we're moving into some more advanced functions that really make Python a successful language. So, so far we've been using a lot of functions, but they're called what's called built-in. So they're provided by Python already um, and we can just call on them as we want. But we can actually define our own functions if we so choose. So why would we do this? So the first thing it does is it can simplify our script. Um, we can consolidate very advanced functions into one area of our script, and then we can call on them to consolidate repetition in our script. So if we're doing something 10 times, rather than write it out 10 times, we can define a function and we can either iterate over that function, which we'll cover shortly, or we can apply the function 10 times separately with just a single function word. So we use the syntax def in order to call on building a function. So typically we'll say def space and then we'll name our function. And then in brackets, we'll enclose a variable or variables, which we'll cover shortly. And then you need to put a semicolon. It's very important not to forget that. Otherwise your function won't be built. Everything that you set in with the tab from here belongs to your function. So you can write a lot of steps of code and you wanna call on the variables that you've defined by name and use them in the function because they'll essentially become the variables that you put into the function when you call on it. And then without a tab, you just type in the syntax return and you can either say the return equals something or you can return something like a condition. So you could return say a Boolean based on whether a result equals something. So let's look at a basic function. So I've just built a little function here called squared. And essentially it only has one variable. So you say def squared and in brackets you say x. So x is our variable that the function will use. We then tab and then we say return x times x. That's essentially our squared function. After this, we can just provide this as a return. So this is what the function will return. We can add more lines of code, which we'll talk about shortly, but um, this is a very simple function. And then I'm just assigning the function to a variable result, and I'm just calling on the function by name, which is squared, applying it to five, and then the result is 25, because our function goes and processes our input. You can actually use multiple variables as well. So let's improve squared and call it power. What we can do now is add two variables, x and y, and I can raise x to the, to the quotient of nine. So in this case, I can create a power function essentially, and then I can call on power two to the power of three and print the result of eight. We can actually assign default values as well. So some of the functions we used previously had default values where if you didn't specify them, Python was okay with this and it proceeded with a default value in its place. Um, so in this case, you can see that I'm saying by default, y is two. So if the user doesn't specify the power that they wanna to raise to, it just assumes you wanna square it. This can be really handy for functions where there is a very common default value that you're either not gonna specify by choice or you might forget to specify just because it's such an obvious input in most cases. And you can see in this case, all we have to do is say power two and y is given the default of two. And as a result, we get two squared, which is four. It's important to understand the depth of variables in functions. So when you put a variable inside a function, it becomes what's called a local variable. So this means that you cannot call on this specific variable by name at the level of your script. So in this case, you can see if I try to print y, which is inside my function, I get a syntax error or I get a name error because y is not defined at what we call the global level of the script. So a really important acronym to remember is LEGB or local enclosing global built-in. So in this case, we have an enclosing function which can actually contain other functions. So it encloses local variables. And then we also have global variables which exist at the script level and can be called on at the script level as well. And then we have built-in variables. So these are things like objects that are predefined into Python, um, like functions and methods. So it's really important to understand that. And LEGB is basically from the shallowest depth to the, to the deepest depth to the shallowest depth of your script. Another quick example before we move on is just a script that has a few more lines of code in it, just to show a function that's got a little bit more going on in it. So in this case, I've created a function called divisible, which basically takes an input number and checks if there's any remainder of that input number of a divisor. So in this case, you can see that I'm setting a variable within my function, which is a local variable in this case. And I'm checking the number with the remainder when it's divided by the divisor. And then I'm returning a Boolean in this case. So I'm returning a Boolean that checks whether the remainder, which is a local variable, equals zero. <clears throat> in this case, you can see if I divide 
if I apply the divisible function to 15, if I apply four, obviously there's a remainder. In this case, a remainder of three, so we get the Boolean false. If I input three, the Boolean is true. So you can see that the function can be applied to multiple things, <clears throat> and you can add more conditions within the function itself. So definitely worth practicing uh, writing some functions before you move on, uh, but hopefully this helps. So in the next part, we're going to be moving on to one of the most useful functions in Python, which is the if statement. Um, and then we'll be looking on from there to things like iterating. So um, hopefully I'll see you in the next video um, and hopefully finding the series helpful. Um, and thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Take care. Bye.